Hello, one community. I'm back to do something special, I guess. Uh, this one's called uh, "Give Me Ten Young McLaughlin," and McLaughlin, uh, McLaughlin, or McLaughlin, as we say in Sweden. Uh, however, you want to pr pronounce it. This is sort of a tribute video to him. I've spent, I guess, the last three days of almost only listening to to. John's uh, music in one way or another and I wanted to do some kind of a I don't know, tribute video or guide if you may to what I consider one of the most interesting recordings with uh, John McLaughlin. Now my fascination with John McLaughlin started about seven years ago something like that. Uh, I've played guitar the last 20 years maybe, uh, started when I was 10. So, so guitarists has always been there, uh, but with John, I was I had no idea about John uh, until my mom got a new boyfriend, uh, actually, and this guy was and still is obsessed with uh, John McLaughlin and especially Mahavishnu Orchestra, but uh, yeah, John, John uh, in particular, and his guitar playing and style. Uh, so he's obsessed and through him, this guy, I started to listen, especially listen and study a little bit about the guy, uh, about John. <clears throat> so uh, I guess that this video is uh, also dedicated to, to him. Um, one of my, yeah, I should say dearest and closest friends today. Uh, and a guy who has enormous musical knowledge, uh, Jan Olof Andersson. So uh, this is to to him. Now I I won't do any like top ten or something like that. It's just my records that really I think that it has really good guitar quality by and it is interesting uh, of John's work. And I won't focus too much on his solo career and his. Uh, recordings with Mahavishnu Orchestra even there there's gonna be two pieces of that but especially this is this video is about his session work with other artists okay so the first thing I'm gonna show you is uh, Miroslav Vito's Mountain in the Clouds this was first issued in 1970 I think as Infinite Search uh, so this is the the reissue from 1972 uh, recorded in 1969 now uh, John McLaughlin plays fantastic guitar on on this one and I highly 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 recommend it for anyone um, I mean fusion interested or you, you mean, I mean John uh, interested and the line, lineup on this one is Joe Henderson uh, you have Jack, Jack Dijonet, Herbie Hancock and Joe Chambers and if I'm gonna recommend one song where you really can hear John play is the second track on the second side I will tell him uh, on you uh, 11 minutes long really really good one thing about this reissue from 1972 is the four, fourth song on the second uh, on the first side is a bonus track that you don't get on the original and uh, the other tracks is just uh, the same so this this copy uh, of this release is highly recommended Okay, so the next one is Supernova by Wayne Shorter from 1969 also, uh, on Blue Note Records. <clears throat> the lineup here is uh, Sonny Sherrock also on guitar, Walter Brooker, Mills Lavitos, Jack Tichonet, Chikoria, Arto Moreira and Maria, uh, Maria uh, Booker also, with Wayne Shorter and John Clough uh, obviously. Now the first song on this, on the first track, is called Supernova, the title track. Uh, is the, the song to, to listen to in my opinion. 4 minutes and 45 seconds long. It's just so damn good. It starts really really intense, very high uh, energy on it, and then it calms down a little bit. And uh, Sonny Sherrock uh, plays guitar on that too, but there's no doubt who's playing what parts in this. You can really, if you know McLaughlin, you can hear who's playing what on the on the on the on the track, and John plays his ass off on this uh, that one. Really, really good. Highly, highly recommended. Okay, so the next one is Escalator Over the Hill by Carla Bley and Paul Hein Paul Heinz, um, and this is more of a free jazz opera. Maybe I don't know if that's the right term of it. There's Carla Bley there. This is the second press. 
gatefold with three LP set. And I mean, the lineup here is just to die for. Uh, everyone's on this. Uh, Jack Bruce, Paul Motion, you have Don Cherry, Gato Barbieri, uh, Michael Mantler. I mean, everyone's on this, uh, this record. If you want to check out John's playing on this one, I, I recommend you listening to uh, The Fifth Side uh, with Raval, Raval Pindi Blues, that's 12 minutes long or almost 13 minutes long and really really good where John starts off in the song and then later Don Cherry's, um, they're called Desert Band takes over and and uh, but at the beginning of it John plays really really great and if you continue on to the second, to the sixth, sixth side uh, there's a track called End of Raval Pindi um, that's almost 10 minutes long where John once again um, starts the entire song. Uh, really really good playing. The only thing I have against this record is the vocals and I mean this is some sort of like a, almost like a theater piece or an opera so there's certain roles people playing so Jack Bruce has one role and he talks and he, he sings over some parts. Um, and I don't think that, I mean, the, the music tells the story by itself, you don't need the voices. Uh, some of it is good, but not everything. And that's the only opinion I have on that, that one. But Escalator Over the Hill, highly recommended also. Uh, just as a freer sort of jazz record. Okay, so the next one is Spaces with Larry Coriel. Uh, and on the except by John McLaughlin, uh, you have Shikoria, Miroslav Vitos and Billy Cobham. This is the, the, the second press of this, I guess, second or third, uh, released 1974, but the original was released 1970. Now, the two tracks to, to listen to on this one is the first tracks on the, on the entire record, Spaces, Infinite and Renee's Theme. And this is actually... it's. The two guitar players on this, John and uh, Larry Cruel, is two masterful guitarists and on this one they, they really stretches their capability, it feels like that anyway, and they almost battle in between each other. One guy solos and the other one takes on after that, uh, it's really really cool. And the second side of this theme is more classical guitar, much more softer, uh, but you know, equally as beautiful. If you like, if you like fusion music and if you like guitars, I mean, this is the the record to get. I think with that lineup with Miroslav Vitos, Billy Cobham, and Shikoria playing together with those two masterful guitarists, this is a no-brainer. This is a must-have for guitarists and fusion enthusiasts. The next one, one of my favorites, is the Tony Williams Lifetime Band. Uh, with emergency in this case, it's the two LP set with gatefold, and that's the the look of the original releases, uh, volume one and two. This is both of them in one pack, and it's hard to to say a favorite song on here. I don't even like. I when I listen to this, I, I start from the beginning and, and listen to the entire the entire thing. It's just fan freaking tastic. I mean, you have a three-piece band on here with McLaughlin and Tony Williams and Larry Young play, playing uh, uh, electric piano organ, uh, organ, and they sound like an entire fucking orchestra. Um, it's very free. It's not for the faint, uh, fainted, faint-hearted. Is that the word? <laughs> uh, it's very free. It's very airy. Uh, very feels uh, at least feels very Im improvised, uh, but all three of them plays their heart out. Um, and the only thing I have against this, and a lot of us have, is uh, Tony Williams talking over some of the songs. In my opinion, I, I mean, after listening to this for two years now, it gets a little bit charming, but then again, it destroys a little bit of the, the, the tempo of the records. Um, just like the Escalator of the Hill. Okay, so I'll talk about one Mahavishnu Orchestra record. Uh, I mean, we talk a lot about, in VC we talk about uh, In Amount of Flame and Birds of Fire. Two uh, first records of Mahavishnu Orchestra, and man, oh man, they are good. Uh, just fantastic and they are the best in my opinion they are the best and I think the, it starts the, the first record is the best versifier second one but we can't forget to talk about this one 
Visions of the Emerald Beyond, their fourth studio record, I think, uh, released in 1975, with a little bit of a different lineup. But this is fantastic. Uh, I mean, especially the start of the entire record where it begins and then John just goes into this almost kind of heavy metal groove. It's like a clash between the guitar sounds like a clash between between Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath almost with that riff, but then I mean from out of nowhere he goes on to to do what he does best with his own style of playing, uh, just fantastic. So I mean if you want to start anywhere, get uh, In Mount Flame and Birds of Fire, but then I mean don't forget to to listen to to this. Uh, masterpiece in my opinion. Okay, so the next one, uh, Journey to Love by Stanley Clark uh, from 1975, uh, a really easy record to, to get. Okay, so if there's any doubt in your mind about the, the brilliance of uh, this guitarist, uh, I mean listen to this because this proves that he not only masters the electric guitar uh, but the classical more acoustic guitar also. Uh, so. There's two tracks on this one called uh, Song to John Part 1 and Song to John Part 2 dedicated to or tribute songs to um, John Coltrane and both of the, the songs is just fantastic I mean um, I think there's clips online check it out it's it's really really good and easy to find as I said Okay so the next one is Joe Farrell Quartet on CTI Records 1970 and the lineup here is Chic Korea, Jack Dijonette, Dave Holland and, and John uh, with, with Joe Fred playing the sax. This is a little bit la more laid back uh, to start um, with the track Follow Your Heart. Now Follow Your Heart is a rearranged um, almost cover version of McLaughlin's uh, Origins Bag from the uh, extrapolation record that he and then later on he also re-recorded it on uh, My Goals Beyond so we get three versions of this track in less than three years I think I read but as I said a little bit more laid back uh, but then again he plays classic guitar on that and in my opinion on this song on this version he doesn't feel that that um, comfortable, comfortable with the classic guitar, uh, not as much as he does with the electric guitar in this period. But, and I don't know if this, it's just a session, but but uh, it feels like he wants to play faster than he he does on this one. Still, again, with that lineup, that version, follow your heart, is just a piece of masterpiece, a piece of masterpiece. <laughs> Check it out. Okay, the next one is one of, uh, I mean, Jack, if you know Jack Bruce from Cream, this is one of the oddities in his catalog recorded before his, his solo career in 1969, 68, 68, so an early version. John was not that famous in this period. He wanted to, to go over to, I guess, US to play with Tony Williams' Lifetime. Uh, but he have, didn't have the money, so Jack invited him to session to pay him for the job. That then later gave him the money to go uh, to play with uh, Tony Williams. This is a, almost like a free free jazz record with, with Jack Bruce. Um, and if you heard the Graham Bond um, record, or records tracks with McLaughlin, Ginny Baker and, and Jack Bruce playing on it. You understand what this comes from, I guess. But this is a fantastic record. Really, really free, energetic and, and feels, I mean, fresh in some way. Feels like these guys are doing what they really want to do. Of course, this couldn't sell like a Jack Bruce record when it came out, I guess. So it wasn't released until later, when Jack Bruce had his his uh, success with his first solo record. The tracks to listen to on this one <laughs> is Sam Enchanted Dick, uh, 
it's a medley with two tracks. And John plays great guitar on this one, really, really goes beyond playing the guitar. And he gets backed up perfectly by John he Heisman. John Heisman, I think you pronounce it like that, uh, who later joined uh, Coliseum and um, um, play with uh, the Prog Band Coliseum and Jack Bruce. They, they make a perfect platform for John to, to really stretch out his guitar uh, skills on. And then later on, this guy, uh, Dick Hextall Smith, this guy here on sax, he comes in and plays his solo. and. Uh, McLaughlin does these fantastic chord changes on that track that just really just once again makes a perfect platform for the sax to play on without soloing and getting all the focus if you know what I mean. So uh, Things to Like by, by Jack Bruce, check it out, it's really really cool. And the one playing in the background, the last one I'm going to talk about is My Goes Beyond by John Mahavishnu John McLaughlin. So this is the one really, really influenced by Indian music. He dedicates it to his mentor down here on the photo. Uh, but the lineup here is just fantastic. Ayrto Moreira, Charlie Hayden, Billy Coltham, Jerry Goodman on violin, really, really good. Uh, Dave Liebman. Uh, and they all play on the first side, piece one and two written by, by John, fantastic. But the second side is the solo side by just John and his acoustic guitar. I think some overdubs has been made where he overdubs uh, and plays two guitars, I mean, but, but fantastic, fantastic. It, two songs on here. Listen to Goodbye Porcupine Hat, the, the Mingus song. Listen to that and, do, and try not to get blown away. I mean, it's impossible. And then again, uh, Follow Your Heart, the one I talked about earlier, that he did on extrapolation and later on 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 the, the Joe Farrell uh, record. Listen to that, just fantastic classical guitar, acoustic guitar playing. I mean, it's in, insane. So once again, highly recommended. This is probably a long one. I'm gonna edit this. Uh, I hope you you dug it. Uh, the new kind of of give me ten video and I mean if you want to respond on this that would be awesome showing some McLaughlin stuff that I didn't show uh, with session work. I have a lot of, of McLaughlin and these were the ones that I really when I listened to uh, really hooked on that I wanted to talk about. Uh, there's still especially two records with John McLaughlin that I don't have the session works. The one, one is uh, Miroslav um uh, Purple only released in Japan in the beginning of the 70s, really hard to get. I mean, it's it's insanely uh, hard to get. And there's also the Kenny Wheeler, uh, Don Quixote, uh, late 60s record. That is just, it's only been released once on LP. And it's, uh, I mean, yeah, $150-$200 record uh, if you want it. So those two is still on my want list, obviously, but other than that, I feel pretty comfortable with my John McLaughlin uh, collection. Take care, everyone. Please comment if you want, and have a great day. Bye.